Hey y'all, Jen here from finder.com. Today I'm going to dig into how to get the best mortgage rate. Right now, rates are at historic lows, but diving directly in might not be the best path for you. Instead of jumping right in, follow these eight basic steps to get the best mortgage rate. Step one is to build your credit score. Not the most exciting part of getting a new home or refinancing, but definitely one of the most important. 35% of your credit score is determined by your payment history. Because of this, a higher score is a strong indicator to lenders that you're good about staying on top of your debts. But another 30% of your score is dictated by how much debt you have, which gets to our second step. The next step is to get your debts in order. Using less than 30% of your available revolving debt, like credit cards and lines of credit, is recommended by many financial experts. Keeping low balances proves to lenders that you're not spending significantly more than you're bringing in. Paying down your debts can also decrease your debt to income ratio. This takes non-revolving credit like car loans and other personal loans into account along with your revolving credit. The math works out as follows. If your take-home pay is $4,000 a month after taxes and your debt payments each month total up to $1,500, your debt to income ratio would be 1,500 divided by 4,000 or 37.5%. 36% or less is an ideal debt to income ratio, but borrowers can sometimes still get approved with a ratio of up to 43%. Between getting your debts in order and building up a history of on-time payments, you can potentially bump your score up to a meaningful amount and put yourself in a good position to have your mortgage application approved at a low rate. Boosting your credit score 100 points can make a difference of a full percentage point or more on your mortgage rate, which can end up saving you tens of thousands of dollars over the course of a 30-year mortgage. With your credit score and debt under control, it's time to save up a down payment. Down payments of 20% or more are ideal. It saves you from having to pay into PMI or private mortgage insurance and can significantly reduce the cost of your loan in the long run. If you're going to go in with less than 20%, know that you'll be saddled with private mortgage insurance until you owe less than 80% of your new home's value. A bigger down payment also makes the mortgage less risky for the lender, which can result in lower rates also. Steady employment is also extremely valuable. While you may not need to have been in the same job for multiple years, it can definitely help. Make sure you can show proof of your employment and income through W-2s, pay stubs, 1099 forms, and other relevant documents. Gathering them ahead of time and having them ready can save you precious time later in the process. Once you have your down payment ready, or at least close to ready, and your financial documents on hand, it's time to shop around. Comparing lenders will help you get the most out of your home buying experience. The speed at which your application is processed, programs available for first-time home buyers, and the overall experience you'll have working with a loan officer will change depending on which lender you pick. And of course, you'll have a better chance of scoring the best rate if you get a loan estimate from more than one company. Asking for the loan estimate from each lender will let you compare each equally to find which one will end up costing you the least. Doing so can save you a couple grand over the life of your loan. Adjustable rate mortgages have the appeal of a low introductory period, but can change after that period is up. Going for a fixed rate mortgage while rates are low across the board will mean not having to refinance down the line to keep a low rate. Once you've found the lender with the lowest fixed rate on offer, it's time to look into discount points. You can purchase points to lower your percentage rate, one point being equal to 1% of the loan amount. That means if your total loan is 350,000, it would take 3,500 to buy one point. That point might then reduce the interest rate by 0.25% but this can also vary. It can take a while to break even with your points purchase, 
Let's say you drop 3,500 to buy a point and it saves you $30 a month. It would take almost 10 years to break even. Once you figure out how many points you wanna buy, it's time to move on to the final part of the process lock in your mortgage rate. If loan rates aren't heavily fluctuating, this may not be as big of an issue. But right now, especially, uncertainty can make for volatility. To make sure that you get the quoted rate, ask to lock it in. You may have to pay an extra fee, but it prevents the rate changing during the closing process, no matter what the market ends up doing. Scoring the best deal on a mortgage isn't as simple as jumping at the first sign of an overall downward trend in rates. Careful planning and coming in fully prepared can put you in a much better place to qualify and net a great rate. To get even more info about mortgages and start comparing lenders, check out our guides and reviews on finder.com, where we break down different types of mortgages and lenders to help you narrow down your search. You can find a link in the description box below. And don't forget to check back here for more personal finance tips and hit that thumbs up to give us a like and click the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Thanks for watching and happy house hunting.